Hi everyone, my name is Joseph, and today I wanted to have a conversation about the Acolyte Star Wars, uh, or Star Wars the Acolyte, excuse me. So, in case one is unaware, they got announced uh, last week um, that the Season 2 of Star Wars Acolyte is cancelled. There is no going to be a continuation of the story. Season 1 will be the only, um, uh, well, Season 4 Star Wars the Acolyte. It was not planned to be that way. If one has seen Season 1, it ends on a cliffhanger. It ends with um, May, May Miles' character, I can't pronounce her name, but May's character uh, going with Q, uh, Q Meyer Q. And um, I was in, in denial. Uh, it ends, the last, oh, one of the last scenes ends with them um, holding hands. I was really hoping they weren't holding hands, but <laughs> again, I was in denial. I watched the sh episode on my laptop, not on my television. So, and actually, I, I also have the laptop a little bit further away from me when it occurred, uh, that scene. Uh, again, I, I was lying to myself, hoping that they weren't holding hands, but according to the conversation online, uh, they were indeed holding hands. Well, I was not a fan of that detail. Unfortunately, we're not going to find out if the relationship flourishes or the relationship flounders. Um, and yeah, so it is, for me, a very disappointing news to be uh, given. Um, I was a fan of the first season. There was issues, but those issues I felt like could be ignored. And if one just stuck with the story, there was a lot that one could enjoy not turning off your brain, one could still enjoy um, the Star Wars story that was being told in a new era that's never been, present, that's never been presented in the um, television format, The High Republic. Um, in fact, one of the only reasons why I watched this show is because I'm a big fan of The Old Republic and I was curious to see how The High Republic would compare to The Old Republic. It was cool to see some of the ships, in my opinion, that looked like was inspired by The Old Republic, but again, at the end of the day, this would be the only property that we're going to have for the Acolyte. We might get another property set in the High Republic era, but it won't be from the Acolyte. I am a little bit hopeful that Disney will go back on what they stated and maybe not next year, not in two years, maybe in three to four years, they'll come back and state that season two will be coming. The only reason why I was looking for, well, I'm actually in a bit of a hard place as well because to be honest, one of the best parts for me for the first season was Master So's character. And if one, so spoilers, if one has seen the show, you know that it ends with Master So being dead. He gets killed by uh, May's character. Uh, when that occurred, uh, I did feel like, oh no, because I was assuming a season two was going to come. I was feeling like, oh no, Master So is not going to be in the second season. Hopefully there'll be other characters that I could like and I'll, I'll appreciate watching on the screen. Because to be frank with everyone, um, Master Vriestra's character, um, she was also being set up to be an anti-hero. Uh, I was not really enjoying her characterization, though. Uh, I did like her, 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 uh, the partner she was working with. I think he was just a Jedi Knight, not a master. Um, but I don't think he was a pal. Or maybe he was a pal, and I can't specifically recall. I've only seen the show once. Um, but if you've seen it, you know who I'm referring to. I did like him. I did like his character. The other Jedi, for the most part, uh, I did enjoy them as well. Even Yord's character. Um, there were some moments, as I said, the show was not perfect, like when they showed uh, his, his chest, there was really no need for that, <laughs> when they showed Keo Myers' um, upper torso as well, right? But again, the Jedi, going back to the Jedi characters, I, I did like all of them, even Jackie's character as well, um, and Yord, I appreciated the way that he was always so apprehensive and doing his best to stick to the Jedi code, and um, I was sad and disappointed when he had his death. And uh, that scene, that scene with the fight with all those Jedi, in my opinion, was a lot of fun. Maybe not as great as the prequel trilogy, but definitely one of the b better lightsaber fights, I have to say. It actually felt heavy. I did like the lightsaber fights in Ahsoka, but I did notice that, and I'm not sure if it was just the actress, she did feel a little bit stiff when she moved with the lightsabers. Balin's character, though, I was totally fine. He was big and imposing, and the fact that he was moving slow, I think that was on purpose. He didn't feel stiff. He just felt like he was a, uh, a character using a two-handed weapon rather than a one-handed weapon, even though it's just a lightsaber. But hopefully you get my analogy, right? Um, <clears throat> so it, uh, going back to season two of the show, I am disappointed. And to be frank with everyone, I really don't blame the show itself. Rather, I do have to place, place the blame upon the showrunners, the director, and the actors, everyone who got interviewed uh, during the lead up for the show's release. To be honest with everyone, I'm gonna be transparent. When I consume medium, I just consume the stories themselves. I really don't follow news surrounding that medium. Sometimes I might hear something like, oh, this actor was included, uh, but I don't follow it. Like for example, I am looking forward to A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms next, uh, next year, but I'm not religiously following any news. I did see an article about the new actors that were introduced, and because I read the book recently, 
uh, the novellas recently. Uh, I did click on the art article to see who was casted as the Targaryens, who was cast as the, um, the for the first the tourney, uh, uh, what's the name, the, 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 the tourney master, whatever his title is, right? Um, but again, I don't usually follow um, the behind the scenes material when in at the Seven Kingdoms actually releases. I'm not gonna follow the interviews. I'm not gonna follow the uh, the the well, yeah, the interviews being conducted. Same thing with movies. I just consume the stories and I move forward from there. So <clears throat> with all of that being said, um, I didn't start watching the Acolyte right away. Uh, I was at first apprehensive just because of Disney's Star Wars track record, but I was hearing all this hollabaloo surrounding the show, and I'm the type of individual who I don't like to have an opinion unless I actually watch or engage with whatever it is that um, that opinion is being made for. Excuse me, that was a hiccup. So I made the choice to go ahead and uh, start watching The Acolyte, and to my surprise, I was actually enjoying it. And a lot of the things that I heard people talking about or complaining about aspects of the show it was not present in the television show itself. Like, for example, everyone kept talking about a certain quote-unquote gay character. I was confused because there was no quote-unquote gay character in the show. And if there was, that was just a uh, an aspect of their character's personality. It's not like the show itself had, like, two Jedi holding hands or two random individuals on a planet holding hands or something like that. I was confused where those comments were coming from. And I, I, I stated this in my review for the Acolyte as well. All this... Hollabaloo, all this uh, noise was coming from the fact that the actors and the showrunners, they were saying stuff uh, during these behind the scenes press tour. I guess it's not behind the scenes, excuse me, but during this press tour, during this interviewing tour, um, things like Arthur D2 is a lesbian. Uh, and Yord, as much as I liked his character, the actor unfortunately had to state that statement where he, where he says, um, Anakin blew up the Death Star. It was just a slip of the tongue. I would like to think it was a slip of the tongue. But yeah, I'm aware of how Disney Star Wars has been hiring individuals who um, who probably state that they don't consume Star Wars or that they don't they're not typically Star Wars fans. I'm fine with that, but I feel like we should be getting neutral people, not people who are saying that they they choose to not engage with Star Wars. Just to get people who are neutral, I think that would be different than actively making a choice. Oh, I'm not going to consume that because uh, it's too nerdy, it's too popular, whatever. It may be. So again, it's just disappointing because I think if the show had just been allowed to run, it would not have caught all this virtual, I can't pronounce words sometimes, excuse me, but I wouldn't have caught all this hate and tremendous toxic news and a lot of people just bringing in toxicity and negativity, right? And again, it's just unfortunate because instead of having conversations about the show, about how um, and again, I, I'm going to have to restate this. The show was not perfect. There were aspects about it that was quite out of place, that was quite funny. Really great example. Probably the best example. <laughs> the power of one, the power of two, the power of many. What was up with that, right? But again, with that being said, I was intrigued by the, uh, what was it called? The virgins. The discussion of this virgins and how these space witches were trying to use the virgins uh, to create another individual, May and her twin sister, two, half, two halves of a person that were separated. I did like that concept. I know a lot of people were upset because they were saying that backtracks were retcons Anakin Skywalker, but one needs to keep in mind that Skywalker was a complete hoe. Um, Plagueis, if he did create Skywalker, uh, or not Plagueis, excuse me, Palpatine, or Plagueis and Palpatine, whoever it may have been, I haven't read that material yet of that aspect of Star Wars, even though that's from the expanded universe, not from Disney canon. Um, I'm more uh, of a new Jedi Order kind of individual when it comes to the expanded universe. But anyways, that's a tangent. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if it was Pat Plagueis or Palpatine or one or the other acting individually, but when they created Skywalker, they succeeded in, in utilizing the virgins correctly. Uh, I was looking forward to just learning more about that. Oh, another silly example would be, and I really don't know why they added this. I was cracking up in the last episode, but having Plagueis himself appear, that, that was ridiculous. Uh, for me, obviously, they just added that just to convince people, come back next season. If you come back next season, we're going to have more scenes with Plagueis. But for me, it was just, it was just uh, so random and a little bit, and, and, and a little bit weird, to be honest with everyone, as a quick refresher, um, he, he Plagueis appears after Kiermaier and May leave to go confront Sao and the other individuals. And as they take off on the ship, Plagueis just like slowly creeps up from behind the cavern. And he's just like a little bit like a creeper. It's like, why are you coming out like that? They're leaving. Just walk on now. Walk on now. Whoa, whoa. It's, it's not a window, right? Anyways, but... <laughs> um. 
Again, I think that shows that I, I, I actually think that I am fair. I do my best to be neutral and then could develop my opinion after I consume something. But the fact that I'm able to laugh at the show, again, shows that, as I stated already three times, the show was not perfect, but the story that was being told, it did have its interesting elements. I, I like the idea of going to different planets and seeing different Jedi temples, not just a temple at Coruscant, not just a fancy temple on an inner world planet. I really like that world temple that the show visited. And we were able to see just regular Jedi Knights as well. One could argue that it was quote unquote woke to have an, uh, an overweight Jedi. But honestly, I, I was fine with that. Uh, Jedi are like human beings. It's not like Jedi are the military. Uh, our Jedi are essentially monks. And yeah, some monks, they will be eating healthily, uh, healthy. But other monks, they won't be eating healthy. If you look at monks in the real world, not all monks are physically imposing. Uh, nor completely healthy, right? When I say imposing, I mean like they're not buff. They're not known for lifting weights. They're monks. And uh, again, that's how Jedi are viewed as well. They're monks, essentially. So it made the Jedi feel more alive. It made the Jedi feel more humane, in my opinion. Uh, I don't agree with other people. I, I really didn't like the story about how I'm trying to portray the Jedi as evil. I am a Master Saul's side. I felt like what he did, although there was a lack of communication, I don't blame him for his actions. I mean, that space witch lady, she turned into a giant ghost monster and she tried to uh, seemingly, it looked like from Saul's perspective, attack um, one of the young girls, right? So that aspect I was not really enjoying the way that the story was trying to portray the Jedi as quote unquote uh, evil, or maybe not evil, but just um, not the, excuse me, not the passions of light and hope that we typically view Jedi as. And I get why Disney Star Wars is trying to do that just because the Pico trilogy introduced that idea, right? The fact that the Jedi were not able to sense Palpatine was because um, not so much that they were corrupted, but they were just being too lax with everything. They were working too much with politicians and forgetting what it meant to be an actual Jedi Knight uh, serving the galaxy and serving the people. If one hasn't seen Tales of the Jedi, I highly recommend the first season. The stories with Count Dooku, ugh, really had so much of Count Dooku's character and just Clone Wars as well. Um, Count Dooku was neutral about him before, but he's definitely one of my favorite characters now. So with all that being said, it's just, again, I am not to reiterate, it is disappointing for me. I was looking forward to a season two. With that being said, I was apprehensive about a season two because Master So, my favorite character, was not going to be present. But I did like Q's character. I was starting to enjoy May's character, even though I was not a fan of that romance that they were going to start pursuing at the end. They being the writers. Um, and then the sister, I was, I'm was i still more neutral about her. I, I, I wish they could have done more with her, especially the way that it ended. Uh, it just flipped a little bit too suddenly for me. But um, again, this just goes back to what I said at the start of the video. It was not perfect, but there was fun elements about the show. And now, unfortunately, the show is over. The show is canceled. And uh, at least we got to have a uh, opportunity to see the uh, actor for Master So. I think he did a fantastic job. Um, and it was cool to see the individual from The Good Place as well. I didn't even know that was him. I think he did a pretty good job as well. I appreciated uh, the characterization that was present. I wanted to find out more about him and find out more about his history. What did he used to be a Jedi? Was he Master Vistra's apprentice? A lot of people made a good point. Although he had those scars, um, people who are knowledgeable with whips, they were saying that whips don't leave those kind of scars um, but who knows maybe it is a tv show maybe they got that detail incorrect by accident right <laughs> but um yeah so thank you so much for watching everyone how do you feel about this cancellation of star wars the acolyte are you celebrating the cancellation or are you like me a little bit dismayed my bad i to say celebrating i'm just saying that because if one goes on social media it seems like everyone is just so gung-ho about this news <laughs> most people who say something positive uh they're very much attacked and um nasty comments are said against them um so excuse me i, I shouldn't I, I should be neutral so again let me rephrase that question are you um are you um happy about this news is this news making you feel like it's well deserved or are you like myself and again the news is making you a little bit dismayed and you recognize the show was maybe not the best but hopefully it could have been better but it won't have that chance or opportunity now thank you so much for watching everyone i really do appreciate it have a great day uh, may the force be with you and take care everyone if you do uh, get into star wars i recommend uh, honestly the expanded universe uh, they can't take the new jedi order series away from us right <laughs> i was gonna start singing that theme song from firefly they can't take the sky from me <laughs> anyways but <laughs> yeah have a great day everyone uh, again i should be by uh, neutral if, if you do 
want to consume Star Wars and of course there's always Andor and if you haven't seen the Acolyte I do ask that you give it a chance go in do your best to be open-minded forget about the uh, interviews that one may have heard the remarks from those interviews and yeah so have a great day have a uh, may the force be with you and take care everyone